quite young people and young girls in situ difficult situations, so they need to make sure that I have to have a full DBS check. Yeah, I the training is full time, but the, the, the actual job I've um, applied for is 15 hours a week. Mm. So after the training period, mm. we will go to part time. Yeah. So hopefully my parents will be here at that time because I'll need help. Yeah, so the training is still time. Yeah, and I wouldn't be able to do that without their help. So thankfully, they decided to come during that time. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> the Yeah, he's not, um, he doesn't start until the next, not this kind of September. Oh, okay. Yeah, his birthday is in October. Okay, so he hasn't started yet. So he'll be one of the older ones. Yeah. That's good, actually. Yeah, he's about the first of August. Oh, okay. He's really young, he's starting. But I don't know, he's very good. Okay, that's good. He's quite mature. Use some biscuits, somewhat of work. That's good. Probably a good thing. Yeah, I think the second one will be more of a good thing.
No, we've been practicing making a synchronised entry, which is well, it went to the other door. <laughs> okay. Thank you, welcome. Welcome to the extraordinary meeting of the Bradley Strong Town Council, the second one we are doing. Okay, as an agenda, members are reminded that Council has its own duty to consider the following matters and its slide of instructions, equal opportunities, crime and disorder, health and safety, and human rights. Thank you. Good to see all of you. And uh, any other introduction part? I don't think. Other than it's the first one after the community festival, we will be talking about emergency evacuation procedure. In an event of a fire alarm, fire drill, or emergency signal by the continuous sounding of a bell, please exit from the room where the exit doors indicated and visible at the meeting point in the car park in the area. Yes, number one, we are adjourning. Oh. <laughs> We are joining for the submissions from the public. Yeah, I'm speaking there, which person can see. Five minutes for us. Hello, mate. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, um, I'll try to be brief. Um, I have a question about the, the bike shed in the car park here. Uh, I know it was talked about um, at a previous meeting recently. Um, I think that was talking about the roof of it, which is missing. Um, but there's a, another point I'd like to raise, which is that the, um, the bike security facilities are substandard um, in that it only provides these what are called butterfly type um, devices where you push your front wheel into. Um, now, this is completely, um, um, you know. Um, behind the latest um, standards uh, and wouldn't be approved um, if it was put up for um, a planning application these days. Uh, what, what is required is, is um, there's a special name for them, I can't remember, but it's a solid hoop of uh, steel which you know, forms a loop and goes down into the ground to which you can um, attach the frame of your bike to this very solid um, stand. So um, the problem with, I'm sure people realise, but the problem with the butterfly things is you push your front wheel in and particularly these days um, bikes have quick release um, mechanisms. Somebody just comes along and, uh, and does that and they take your bike away less, <laughs> less the front wheel, assuming you've locked it to, to the loop there, which is the only practical thing you can do. So um, I think generally I'd like I'd like to think the council would be minded to review the quality, the standard of the provision of parking, and certainly if you're um, intending spending any money on it, to, to consider cons consider that comment. <coughs> Okay, we're going to look into that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, secondly, um, I'm not sure I can stay for the planning uh, meeting, but I did oh. see in, <laughs> in the minute, um, in, the, in the report, um, a note about some damage during the community festival to a marquee in which 14 panels of the marquee, I'm guessing it was the big one, I don't know, the arts and crafts thing, um, which is uh, disappointing. But I was just, I'm curious to know, is, is the council liable for, to repair yeah. that damage, or was it hired? the police caught them. A big pun? The police caught them, because a member of the public reported it, and yeah. the police actually caught them. But I mean repairing the damage. No, uh, the, no, the company who supplied it had insurance. They have insurance, and it's covered by that. Yeah. Okay, that's, it's good to hear that the, the council isn't um, liable for that. And um, finally, um, I just wonder if you can give some information about the so-called travellers 
um, that are parked um, outside um, because they've been, um, I understand it's been deemed a unauthorised encampment <laughs> of one motorhome and a van, um, but there have been people saying, um, I don't know if it's that uh, vehicle or others have tried to get onto this site yeah. And also, um, you've um, found it necessary to lock the gates at certain times of the day. Is there any, is there any truth in this? Or? The vehicles arrived on Monday. We report Monday afternoon. We reported it to the police. We reported it to South Gloss Traveller Unit on Tuesday morning. They came out and spoke to them. Um, they've not caused any problems at all. It's social media rumour which says they've tried to get onto the site because they didn't and in actual fact they have said to us that they've got no intention of coming on site mm -hmm. so we did um, lock the gates Monday we have evening as a safeguard just because we wondered if there were we more kind of earlier there. than normal you mean or is that is that what you mean you locked the gates earlier than you would normally yes. I presume they're locked anyway overnight yes, but, yes uh, earlier yeah. Yeah. And we um, manned the gates for the school mm. run. I saw, I saw you there. <laughs> I saw you in, uh, in the rain. Yes. Yeah. So the Valharas were advised of, that the gates would be locked, so yeah. to be prepared to either walk or yeah. to park yeah. in the rain. So and what time are the... On the south, well, you're aware of that, aren't you? There's an update on the South Gloss. Yes, I saw that. Right. Um, so what time were the gates locked, and is that going to be an ongoing policy? Or? No, no that was just a... Just, as a precautionary measure. just on the Monday, so so there are no current measures. No. No. Okay, good. Thank yes, you. We also, you actually locked it for some time, isn't it? Yes, we also. No, we didn't lock it, we manned the gates Man, for yeah. the school run. Yeah, Yeah, because the other high risk were there. Yeah. Okay. But so, so no other uh, issues were there from the travellers. Yeah. No. Just in there. Mm. Okay. Any yeah. others? No, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll see you back. All right, thank you. To receive number two, to receive any apologies for absence. Uh, Councillors Tony Griffiths and Brian Ferguson. Yeah. Number three, application for dispensation by councillors. <coughs> by the chair. Yeah, this is the first meeting after the Minister of Town uh, Community Festival. The Community Festival went well, um, even though on the first it was actually a bit joint motion on Friday, but uh, on Saturday it was windy, but it's managed. And uh, Sunday we, uh, we've been to the 10K, um, then we had the church service, we went to also the Ralistro Cricket Club, the boards club, um, they had a free <coughs> run was there, and also the skate park. It was, skate park was also a good number of people turned up there, but it, in the end it was raining. Okay, but other than that, on the sun, Saturday it was windy, but by four o'clock it was damp packed, so there was a lot of crowd at that time. Um, thank you, sorry for helping. Uh, lots of people were there. Um, other than that, uh, Representing the town council, I've been to the start of the Stokes Award, then the PQA Academy, uh, along with uh, Franklin, a few other meetings. Anyway, so I think uh, these are the things which I've been doing. So, any other updates? I yeah. Can I just say we should have thanked uh, departing councillors from last year uh, at the last meeting? That was Paul Hardwick. Another issue, and that's with the journal. Now, I don't know who writes this stuff, um, but down the bottom there, on page 17, it said, when the town clerk remarked that most parish councils are operated along party lines, and that's how it should be, she received a swift rebuke from Councillor Aidan, who said it wasn't her place to express opinion. Well, I never said that. I think um, the author needs to go back to his... Uh, 
is the recordings and uh, correctly identified. Someone might have said that, but it wasn't me. So I don't know um, who said that. And then the other thing is, I'm now classed as a veteran, apparently. Now, the only veterans mm -hmm. I know about are these soldiers on the beaches of Normandy, all in the 90s, uh, walking with sticks, every one of them a hero. And I don't know what I've done to deserve elevation to that group, but uh, there you go. Yeah. So, veteran? Would you, like, would you like me to answer? Um, <clears throat> yeah, in that context, veteran means you're a long-standing uh, councillor, uh, or one of the most well, long-standing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come up with a so tweet if you like, you know, just to... <laughs> <laughs> sorry if you uh, interpreted that. I was once described as a Tory grandee in Northampton. Oh, that's, mm. that's posh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would mine have to do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number six. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Number six to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of May 2019 as a first We have the Okay, number six. Okay, number six. so that you can discuss when I'm signing it. Number seven, to deal with matters arising from the minutes of the meeting held on 15th of May 9th, 2019, not covered elsewhere on the agenda, to grant town, 7.1, to grant town council the facilities on the following external bodies, dispensation to vote at the meeting on behalf of the rallies of town council, 7.1.1. Yeah. Oh, you've got that in your agenda pack, so it's just at the meetings, obviously, the, the people itemised below were um, allocated or appointed as the representatives. These three, there is the possibility of voting at the various meetings, so it's just to give the people who are your representatives the um, dispensation to be able to actually vote on behalf of the town council. Do we do them all together? Yes, you can certainly do them all together. that we actually um, replace uh, our four on what is proposed to us by the town clerk with the following two um, paragraphs and I'll pass the wording up to the town clerk afterwards so that she saves her taking copious notes. And I would like to suggest that what we actually have as four is where the town council consists of councillors from all or several different political parties then each committee shall consist of seven councillors, plus ex officio the mayor and deputy mayor, with places allocated in accordance with the number of councillors in that particular group. This to take effect from May 2020. And five, the town clerk should report to the next meeting as to the resulting membership figures. And that is my proposal, Ms. Mayor. Everybody the wants. next meeting, as is what? Oh, of the council. This meeting. Yeah. Next meeting. Right. Of the council. Yeah. Next meeting of the council. 
you like to have a I put forward a proposal, but you, the actual figures, the way it breaks down, particularly as regards the um, minority parties or minority groups or minority members, probably <coughs> needs to come back but rather than being decided now. But if we wish right, to make no, a decision no, 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 now, just, I, I just wanted clarification on the Anybody want to say anything? I'd like to say something on this. When you are an independent, you don't represent any party, you actually represent the residents who vote you on. So I think this doesn't actually wouldn't matter. Because as an independent, you're not affiliated to any parties. And what you state is in that is parties. I said political group, I think that's No, you said parties. I said parties in one case and political group in another. We're not a group. If you're an independent, you are not a group. You are independent to any party or group. You represent the residents who elect you on. You are not party or a group. Yeah. Anybody wants to say that? Ben? Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, with these things, it's clarity. You make a good point. So is that point being made in the wording, so it should say independent, or are... No, he's, he's, it should state, if he states, his one here stating are the group or parties. As an independent, you are independent from any group or any party. So, so it, it should not come into fold. So you can't, you can't really have sort of like say to what impact you can't do that because it's the residents we're not representing the party on here we're representing the residents yeah, we've voted on as the residents yeah we don't want to represent the residents yeah. so, uh, yeah. so would it be the wording change in saying to recognise that you're representing residents that voted mm -hmm. because we all were <laughs> voted in by residents yeah exactly so that that's true to everybody so what is it that you propose that would add or change that? I'm, pro I'm not proposing to add or change, I'm proposing against this. Okay, that's what you said, okay. Yeah, because okay. you've got Conservatives, you're all Conservative, you are part of the party. Independent, independent, we're not. Mm -hmm. Can I, um, we are separate from yeah, yeah. anything yeah, like I that. I understand the point, yeah. that, that was the clarity, thank you. Yeah. Can I help yeah. then, rather than change the words reading with the numbers of councillors not a member of the majority political group? Mm -hmm. Leaving that wide open as to what yeah. standing people have. Mm -hmm. yeah, and also I think so. it's absolutely ridiculous because yeah. we are rep we're town, we are not district, we are not parliament, we are town for all the people. And we are volunteers, we represent the people for the good and great of the town. This is up to you. If I'm not on any of all the committees, I am not representing them in the council. Sure. No. Anybody wants to say anything? Because I, I as it was a motion, um, I checked with the Western Supermare Town Council and this, what they have is, it's not in the standing order, but they actually having a working arrangement. Um, they, they always used to have a working arrangement with the leaders, it's maybe a bigger, because it may be a bigger big town council, it's a little bit of a council. So they have that arrangement. But this one, the proposal is, one is to fix the number of number members to the committee. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, but right now, according to rule, if it's the AGM, right now this gives an opportunity for other minority groups also should be represented. That is actually right now. That is a right you are actually gaining. Otherwise, in an AGM, let's say, it's all councillors, uh, majority ruling party, only electing their members, then the minority will be left out. That's another point. So it's. But I think um, it's um, fair. So you are talking about proportionality. So you yes, this guarantees places for people who are not members of the majority party. <clears throat> but not necessarily all members on all committees. But then so does the existing system. Why does it need to be changed? It's worked in the past. Mm. 
Yeah, so exactly. That's yeah. what, so why, why change it? Because it is then set in standing orders. Whereas it is now, it is possible for the majority party to refuse to have anybody other than the majority party members on why? the committee. Is, like I said, this is town. It's not district and right. it's not parliament. It's town. That. We all that. represent the residents. I appreciate that. And we've voted on for the representatives. I appreciate if that. I yeah, myself don't get... Sorry, sorry, Chair. If I am not allowed to go on all three committees, then it's you lot who is failing no, for me is, to go on you, it. Right now, when you actually address a meeting, I'd always address the Chair so that will not be essentially a debate. And the healthy debates are fine. Um, so it's fine. Great. Um, anybody, Franklin? Uh, I think from what we have here in the last, what we did last time we met, I think the list of people that we have in each committee here mm -hmm. is okay to me. It's okay. We don't really need to enshrine this in our standing order. It's individual's choice to sit on any committee that they wish it to sit on. So I think I'm one or I think I agree with Elaine's uh, input here and yourself as well. So we should let it, let it open. Uh, one thing, you're right, okay, I understand your point. But right now, there's a danger in this well as just a majority party can, in an AGM, only vote for their members to be in each committee, then the minority parties or likely groups or leaders may not get a representation in the, in the committee. Committee. So this will give a fair share of proportionality. So it's actually giving. So that is actually one of the things in a positive. If you want to take it in a positive, way, but it's up to you. And otherwise, no, you, you can have you know. as many as you want on each committee. It doesn't have to be four and one. You can have if all fifteen wants to go on no, the said, committee. You can. No, a committee is formed by the full council. The full council is voting for the committee. That's how the committee is formed. Imagine a situation where. Mm. X party X uh, Rosh I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, party X <coughs> and party Y, okay, is there. But imagine party mm -hmm. X got ten seats and the party Y got five seats. Okay, imagine the scenario. And the party X voted they're only their members to the committee and the party Y gets nothing. That is actually the danger. Okay. Can I ask a technical question to the town clerk? Is that possible? Is the way you remember it, we were voting for all the names. Yes, yeah, but, but but actually there is no. It's not. Doesn't say everybody's voted in a mass. You could, if you wanted to, okay. actually vote each individual councillor. So actually, that scenario mm -hmm. could it could happen. I would like to think it wouldn't happen. But yes, so in, that, in that case, we should change the word in here to reflect. Instead of party, we have independence and other parties. So we could change the wording. Yeah, that is the reason why I checked with the bigger council. Um, the and what they are having is the unwritten rule already. So they always have a kind of a working arrangement. But um, uh, what Councillor Michael has proposed is always giving which all parties you know giving will be a fair share always. That's exactly the point. Anybody wants to say anything? Because yeah, do we, do we, do? we have exactly what you've just said. We've had an unwritten rule for as many years as I can remember, which has worked for everybody. Absolutely anybody who wishes to be part of the committee is able to be part of the committee. It's worked. It's never restricted anybody. And that is no different, basically, to what you're saying in Western Supermar. It's an unwritten rule. It works. But it, it, but they said, and when I checked with the ML and the NLC, National Association of Local Council. They said it to, it's, it, it to each parish and town council to actually formulate their standing orders according to according to democratic norms. According that's what they said. You cannot take arbitrary. This council doesn't have authority to make arbitrary laws or anything like that according to democratic norms. And so it's up to the council. Right now, is is actually it, why can there's a proposal what we can need to actually vote it out or not to be carry on. So any other debates? I, because before voting, I would like to actually get everyone's opinion. So that's reason. Michael, can you please read it again? Uh, yes, of course. <coughs> and I've taken on board the point that uh, has been made opposite and uh, taken out the reference to the political groups where it seems inappropriate. So it now reads, where the now I better read it better with my glasses on. Where the town council consists of councillors from all or several different political different parties, 
then each committee right. shall consist of seven councillors plus ex officio the mayor and deputy mayor with places allocated in accordance with the numbers of councillors not a member of the majority political group. This to take effect from May 2020. And then the power of five, which I don't think there's any um, confusion about or debate about, the town clerk should report to the next uh, council meeting as to the resulting membership figures. Can I just ask whether point five actually needs to go into standing orders or whether you could do no, that as a separate happy. proposal because that actually obviously wouldn't apply after. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next. Quite that's happy. why I was querying oh, yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. you had it down as point five for the. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right, that's right. Quite you can have that as a separate quite proposal. Quite happy to delete that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I think that's reasonable. And, uh, uh, um, yes, from Bruce. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'd quite happily second that to the proposal. Once again, sorry, town clerk. With the wording suggested by Councillor Hill, uh, since at the moment it only applies to me because it's talking about uh, councillors from well, it's talking about uh, councillors from not from the majority. No, no, it's okay. not I think it doesn't say political party. No, no, you've taken out the word political. I have just said party. So. I've, I've said uh, yeah, yeah. You can you can put your motion. I've said in accordance with the numbers of councillors, not a member of the majority of political group. Yeah. So yeah. that includes everybody outside yes. the political yeah. major group. So right now we've got it in the three committees. Uh, eight, nine, nine, zero? Yeah. Eight, nine, all up. Yeah. Nine, nine, Finance nine, is five plus two plus one, the other two are six plus two plus one. And with the new rule, would I be allowed to join all three committees or not? It's a matter of uh, mathematics, how does it work? I, I honestly don't know on that one. Because it's the, they're always in the detail. Depends if you do a, a ratio of two numbers, and yeah. do you round up or down? If, if I am entitled to 0 0.7 councillors in a committee, yeah, is, it, is it a zero or a one? Because it would be Yes, yeah, I, don't, I can't answer that one, I'm afraid. That was one of the reasons I thought it might be an idea to come back and speak at the next meeting. Okay, so right now we have a proposal. We have a. Uh, you want to say anything, Councillor? No, I just I just mulling over a minute because at the end of the day, we all wherever we come from, we represent the people who voted to put the X's on the piece of paper, and I think that's a very valid point. For that. I understand where Michael's coming from because it's a protectionist move. Mm. If, we, if there was a majority party that was fair-minded, that action of exclusion could be done. So I think there's two things here. One, that's in standing orders that we could refer to to be used in the case of conflict. And could we have a working agreement, as you found with the other <coughs> council, of how we behave ourselves? Because we're always allowed to do that, are we not? Or are we rigidly tied to, to what's in standing orders? That's, that's, that's the crux. Mm -hmm. yes, no, I think the answer is that there's always, obviously, the right for any councillor to attend any meeting. It's a question of voting. Yeah, no, that comes to that. That's, I'm thinking what Ed just said. Wouldn't the if we were to put in what was, is already currently in existence into standing orders, that would just be saying that the council and the AGM, so to speak, could not, you know, vote down somebody who wanted to join a committee. So if they wanted to be on that committee, mm -hmm. the council couldn't turn around and say, no, you can't be on that committee because we, we say so. If somebody's up for the job they want to do it, they should be allowed to enter the committee. Yeah. Is that what your... I think so. I, so think, I, I think it's being, I think it's being fairer for anyone coming outside. If, if if I was a voter, let's put it this way, and I, I think that's the point you're making. If a voter walked in now and said, "I voted for you," because I felt that you were the best representative of that ward, and that's what's happened. So each of us have been voted in as the best representative of that ward by by people. So we do reflect on on that. So. If somebody said, I want fair uh, uh, representation at council, that you come in, it's saying that in one way, we're making sure that there isn't an exclusion, which is what we're 
saying there, and we're trying to make that a, a, a written contract. But at the same time, we're also recognising we're all councillors. So yeah, I, 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 yeah, think, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's a bit difficult in one way or other. Uh, yeah, but but it's, it's, it needs, I think it needs to be I'll, there. I'll come back. Uh, yeah, I'll give a, Andy the chance to speak. And then, uh, yeah. Similar to what Ben was saying, perhaps instead in the standing orders, we put the, all the committees are open to all of the councillors. Then it'll be 15 councillors all the time, all the meetings. That's okay. Doesn't matter, does it? We know what, what I was trying to say was so, if, so it's not necessarily 15 councillors for those committees. If all 15 wanted to go on the committee, then obviously would be in that situation where you couldn't. But we've never really been in a in a predicament where we've had all 15 people go forward. Yeah. No, we haven't. No. Oh, all the, since 2011, we've never had. Okay, Mike, then we will. Oh, I think it's just worth making the point. Sorry, sorry, can I just. Yeah. Say that? So I'm just I'm just saying. So at the moment, the, 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 what generally tends to happen at the AGM is that councils put their names forward, <coughs> and then council just vote on block on what yeah. happens on yeah. each committee. Yeah. So I'm saying if people are concerned about the exclusion point, and that's the that's what you don't want to happen, is then the people who are willing to put their names forward to go on to that committee, the council will vote them on. But then the people who have not put their names forward at a later day can't just turn to a committee meeting and expect to take part and vote on my committee. And in the six years I've been on council now, I can't recall a time when we've ever had all committees with all 15 councillors on there. There's been times when the finance committee has been down to four or five yeah. individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Councillors wouldn't be able to attend a committee meeting mm. and comment and vote if, unless they were on that committee. Yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. They can come to the meeting and observe, that, yeah. obviously. If you're trying to put across like, the current the, you know, the status quo into standing orders, that would be where if someone for another different political group or independent or whatever wanted to go on to that committee or not turn around and saying you're going to vote, vote them off, you're not going to exclude them. Okay, I think two Mike. points, uh, Mayor, if I may. Um, first, first of all, of course, if we had a committee of 15, it would probably be, have to be eight people there to be quarried, mm -hmm. and I think that is probably extremely unlikely. Uh, and the second point is, of course, any councillor who's not a member of a committee will have the opportunity to comment on the minutes when they come to council for ratification. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right now, I think it's uh, enough of things happen the right other the proposal does a second uh, as well. I think we... Have a name vote on this, please. <coughs> but this is actually, we know, in a way, it's a protection to the minority groups, isn't it? I, I disagree. I, I think we should just leave it as it is now and just say that membership of the committees are not suggesting that all 15 members should be automatically part of the committees. But the committee should be left open for any of those 15 members to join should they wish to do so. Anyway, right now there is a proposal, the second term. Hang on a minute, I'm still writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. means that when it comes for when you're actually voting I actually make a record of who voted for against an abstention just so that <coughs> 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 
It has to be called at a certain time. It has to be called. Such a request must be made before moving on to the next business. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 When the motion was moved, shouldn't the name vote have been moved at that time? Well, no, because there wasn't a vote, was there? It was just... I thought we were just going to the next meeting. Request is according to the standing orders. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, we have a proposal right now. A proposal by Mike. Sorry, can you just once more read out the... Yes, of course. And you'll give me that, will you? So I don't... Okay, it's a bit scribbled now because I made alteration. Taking things on. I'll write it up again for them. <coughs> when, when the town council consists of councillors from all or several different yeah, okay. parties. From all we can actually omit because it's. There I'm is no quite happy to take that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite happy to take that out. Then each committee shall consist can of you, seven Sorry, can council. you also include subcommittee? Because we, we don't have subcommittees, but we do have the opportunity Maybe. to have subcommittees, so it should be committee or subcommittee. Or subcommittee. And or or? Yeah, um, slash. Um, slash subcommittee. Or. And or. Shall consist of seven councillors, plus ex officio the mayor and deputy mayor, it's actually chair and vice chair. Same thing. Well, to get the wording correct, it is because that's what you're voting for, obviously, in the standing order. It's chair or vice chair. No, I'm voting for, I'm saying that the, the mayor and the deputy mayor should be ex officio members no, of all committees. The, yeah, the chair and vice chair are ex officio. It's not the mayor and deputy mayor, it's the chair and vice chair. That's what it says it's in standing the, orders. In standing orders. It's yeah. the chair of the council and then it becomes the mayor of the town. So that's yeah. how it is. So it's chair and vice chair of the council. Mm. Yeah. Uh, with places allocated in accordance with the numbers of councillors, not a member of the majority political group, this to take effect from May 2020. All in favour? Right, bear with me a minute because obviously I need to uh, recall names. That's Roger, John Ash, Michael Hill, Keith Cranny, and myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's 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 oh, sorry, Terry. That's two of them. Yeah. That they were behind me. In favour? Okay. Ben, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So that's Roger, John, Michael, Keith, John, Terry, Ben, and Nikki. Right? Yeah. Against? Three against. Bear with me a minute. Yeah. Abstentions. Okay. Proposal okay. carried. Yeah. Then you need the second bit, which isn't actually the standing yeah. order, but it's the, <coughs> the action for me. Yeah. Michael, can you actually read out the action for the town plan? Yeah, the numbers. Sorry. Number, what was number five? Number five. The town clerk should report for the next meeting on the resulting membership figures. Be no, it's not in the standing order oh. resolution, resolution, but it needs to go in the minutes. Okay, I'm with you. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Town clerk to report to the next meeting as the <coughs> resulting membership figures. Um, you don't need to vote for that because that's just something that needs to do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 7.2.2 proposed amendment to standing order so that there is an automatic subscription from vice chair to chair of town state chair, although this may not be possible on occasion. Okay, slash. Okay, for proposal. Yes, you can speak. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah. Um, I think now that um, the vice chair <coughs> council should automatically succeed up to chair of council. Um, the always says on there, although it may not always be possible on occasion if the council is no longer in position or re-elected. I have spoken to Alka, Haven Council Association, and they don't have any concerns with including this within the within the standing order. So. Yes. Any other? Anyone to stop us? Anybody wants to make me have it? That's the, right now. There's a proposal vote. Okay. But do what else we can talk. Otherwise, we will do that on the board. I've got a question about this. So, um, what if, even though this isn't true for this uh, area, what if there's a change in political standing from one year to the next in the area? So, if the vice chair automatically becomes the chair, but in the following year, the demographic, the yeah, political yeah, interests have things. changed, then how would that work? It is, there is the um, mechanism within standing orders to suspend standing orders. Okay. Um, there are some standing orders which are involved within standing orders that you cannot change because they're legal things, but other things which you put in separately. Um, you can actually, there is, there is a standing order which says you can suspend So we could orders. suspend that if it didn't apply in a given year, mm -hmm. if it may Potentially, okay. okay. Yes, John, then, then, then John, yes. No, that's okay, she's yeah. okay. yes, yes. The suspension of a standing order though, so for, hypothetically speaking, if you're at a meeting, could you therefore, before you appoint the vice chair of the meeting, the then, or whatever, or the chair of the meeting, can you actually propose a vote there and then to invoke the standing the suspension of the standing order? Or would you have to have it on the agenda to invoke the suspension of the standing order to then go through to the vote and then to progress forward? What would the mechanics be of that? Could we just turn up in a meeting and suspend the standing order? It happened in, uh, in one of the case studies which I had seen. A new political party came to power, I mean, as a councillor, the way voted in, first thing they did is they suspended the standing order completely. Under yes. the order of business, the first four are things which you cannot suspend. So the first one is to elect a chairman, the next one is to receive the chairman's declaration of office, and then the next one is in the ordinary year of election of the council to fill any vacancies left unfulfilled by the election. At at the election by reasons of insufficient nominations. Um, the fourth one is to decide when declarations of acceptance of office and written undertaken shall so you be received. Couldn't suspend and then number five, which isn't involved, is to elect a vice chair of council. So when you put, if, we're, if we're talking about the standing order to, to automatically elect the vice chair to chair, before you get to that <coughs> chair you know, confirmation part of the agenda, are you saying that the chair of that, that meeting or anybody in the, in the council meeting would turn around and ask for a suspension of the standing order and then that's voted on, then we go through to the appointment of the chair of council? Yes. Um, yeah, okay, so what if the... I've asked a question. I, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just looking to see about... What if the deputy chairman has been a thoroughly reprehensible character he might have done his hands in the till, he might have been tapping up young women. He could even have been reported to the Standards Committee, heaven forbid, you know. Um, does that automatically respond, or are you going to carry on uh, electing them as uh, If you're actually as we And uh, what happened a year ago? Didn't quite go to plan a year ago, did it? No, because um, you set, set the president when you went against me, Roger. You, you set the president. You did. You did. No, 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 no. Going back to Ben's question, the variation, revocation, or suspension of standing orders, any or 
therefore every part of standing orders, except those printed in bold type, may be suspended by resolution in relation to any specific item of business. So any council could ask for a suspension of the standing order in that, in that AGM meeting to then change who would get, it stop the automatic succession of vice no, chair to chair. To be honest, at that time it will not happen because if the first one is election of chair. Yeah. That cannot change. So if there is a rule, even de facto, de facto, even become even the. But that's the one standing order. The other standing order no. is to. No. But it says no. at each annual meeting, the first business shall be to elect Elected a chair. So and that's in bold, and that can't be changed. That cannot be changed. Be changed. Be changed. <laughs> but you could suspend the standing order that <coughs> is restricting who is nominated to that position, couldn't you? Because yeah. that's a different yeah. standing order. It's a different standing order but, which we're putting in place okay. to say you yes. automatically become uh, from vice chair to chair, no. but then you're still going to elect a chairperson of the meeting anyway, so you wouldn't actually suspend the standing order in bold type. Yes, and, uh, I, I, I think uh, you said the answer to what I was going to ask, because it's in the order of business. If you have the order of business that, that says you appoint a chair, and that person happened to be the deputy chair before that is, is being automatically nominated, you can't then suspend. No, so the, within the AGM, the outgoing chairperson chairs the meeting. So the outgoing chairperson could choose to suspend the standing order that is restricting the vote for nomination to who's going to become oh, you do it chair to vice chair. Yeah. So just before you get to it, you can no, suspend no. it. So I don't understand no. the point of the standing order. If yeah. at any point you could just ask for it to be suspended and have a vote on the chair of the But you can't council. suspend anything which is involved in type. And the very first thing on the yes, order of business says at each annual meeting the first business shall be to elect a chairman. Sure. So, it, so if somebody tried to suspend that standing order, you can't because it's involved. So you could, you'd have to elect a chair and then someone could decide to suspend the standing order to elect a vice but, chair. But that's, a, that's a, I feel um, because of that, with my small knowledge and the problem right now is if you actually put this one is automatic succession as a hereditary one or some form if I have election then de facto there is no other choice he have to be then only you can actually uh, revoke or suspend or anything on the standing order because that's in board we can actually we cannot suspend or revoke a very the one that is actually in the board and that is the process. yes John well I'm against this proposal um, Firstly, if the council doesn't like the vice chair, or the vice chair disagrees with them, they have the power then to make him not the chair. That's happened to you, because you weren't voted in. So the council decided. If you said the vice chair has got to be chair, then you're tying the hands of that council, which is, I think, is unfair. And also, at an election, Labour could get in next time, but the vice chair could be a conservative, and then Labour would have to vote for a conservative chair. And I don't think they'd be happy to that. And I think the point is, it's just up to the, the people at the time, if the vice chair has done a good job, and though I've got nothing against Tony Griffiths, so I'll quite happily vote for him to be chair next time, you know, because he's done nothing wrong as I can see, but the council has got to have the power to decide, and it can't have its hands tied by something like this. Right now, anybody to second the motion? Right now, there's a debate on what happened. Anything else to say? Because we need, I hope there's a, there's a healthy debate. So, anybody to at least second the motion? Okay, for Brazier. Where is the All in favour? Mm -hmm. All against?
8.1, approve the 2018-2019 annual development statement in section 1, page 4. So this is the annual order, you've got all the paperwork in front of you. The first thing is the annual return. So this is the... This is the um, red, uh, the uh, document that has to be returned for a, a town council of, of our size, um, and it has to be approved by council um, in a specific order. So, together with um, the paperwork that went out, I did include. Council minutes, on the council minutes as well, just mm -hmm. to sort of first speaking along. So the very first thing that has to be approved before anything else is the annual governance statement. And this is where council um, <coughs> have to consider uh, whether we've got uh, good internal controls in place. <coughs> So basically on page four, items one to nine that are specified uh, under the annual government statement, council has to consider whether we meet all these requirements. <coughs> this has been internally audited, by the way. The, the internal auditor has looked at this and given us a clean bill of health. Um, and for new councillors, um, earlier in the year, Ben, who was, who came, it was, Ben and John, wasn't it? It was, yeah, Ben and, yeah. Ben and John came into the office and we went through these <coughs> financial risk assessments, procedures and what have you. Um, and a copy of that minute, um, <coughs> was included sort of with the paperwork that's uh, um, gone out. It's actually on the back of the, the minutes, the proposed minutes that I put down. That was to actually go in and consider all of these criteria. And um, in the uh, March meeting, um, it was basically they did say that we do meet all the criteria um, required for governance of our uh, risk and accounts and the general running and internal controls within the office. So um, at this stage, it's just for council to approve the annual, as part of the annual judgment statement. So off of the council minute that I put forward, I've, I've just suggested um, something in line with previous years. Uh, following the council's internal governance inspection on the 18th of February, uh, members considered the position and felt that strong governance, internal and risk management controls are in place. Uh, following receipt of the successful intern internal audit, council can confirm that it positively meets the requirements of all sections of the 2018-19 annual governance uh, statement, which is section one. So that needs to be... Approved and then. Okay, can we have a vote, please? All in favour? That's what that is. Yes, I'm not sure. Uh, 8.2, approve the 2018-2019 accounting statements in section 2, page 5. So section 2 is to actually say, 
and I'm sure that you've all been through all our accounts to say that the figures that I've put down in section two, which is on page five again of the annual return, um, are correct. I can assure you that they are. They have been, again, internally audited, but um, it, it's uh, council has to approve and accept these for, so that they can be lodged and it has to go this week. Yes. please. So we do you have to, is this the proposal? Yeah. So, yeah, so um, the proposal could be uh, taking the above into account and following further consideration, including the accounting and financial reports, which have been presented to the Finance Committee throughout the year, together with the final year-end figures uh, presented to June Finance, Council can confirm that it positively meets the requirements of all sections of the 2018-19 Accounting statements, section two. two. So I'm proposed, ben? Second, yeah, seconded by that. Sorry, who seconded? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Good, please. All in favour? Let's see now. Thank you. That's, uh, I will go to the number three, eight point three. Receive the 2018-2019 annual internal audit report on page mm -hmm. three. So again, on and the annual return, I'm, I am sorry, but this is. No, <laughs> I'll just read out that part. That's 2018 2019 internal audit report was received. Members were reminded that Council have already received a high rated mid year internal audit in February 2019, and South Gloucester Council Internal Audit Service has now also given a clear year end annual internal audit as detailed on page 2 of the annual report. Page three, page three, page three, yeah, three. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And yes, Rachel, you want to say? That's it, you've, you've just. Uh, that, I only have That's it. Yeah, you just received it. We've got two uh, auditors. We've got two signatures on here. I think it's one and then her boss. Yeah, oh. so we had Elizabeth Griffiths in. Mm -hmm. um, we had to George put George. all the um, sort of big work together. It then goes back. To the head of um, South Gloss Internal Audit, who look at, look at all the uh, paperwork and evidence that we put forward and have to basically substantiate. Is South Gloss Council doing in the audit for all the parish and town councils? Yeah. I think they do a few. They, they do a few, but I, I think it's limited as to. Okay. They do the bigger ones, they do most of um, uh, the school academies and things like that as well. <coughs> So we're going to go to 8.4. Adopt the date set for the period for the exercise of public rights. This one is council were advice of the date for the period of the public notice, which would be Monday, 1st July, <coughs> and Friday, 9th August 2019. These dates comply with the statutory audit requirements, and the notice will be placed on the council's website and notice boards. So that, that's just to be noted. Um, okay. I picked the dates out. And Great. The rest that's it. it so. Okay. okay. <clears throat> this is actually, yes. Um, on 8.3, was that on page 2 or page 3? Page 3. Page 3. Page 3. Page three. That was already, yeah. I did point that to you. Point that was the wrong page. Page 3. Okay. Can we move to the next one? Agenda. Number nine, adoption of 2018-2019 financial statements. Yes, Rich. This is the financial statement. Um, I'll start at page one, shall I? Yeah. <laughs> I'll break it off. So, um, basically, uh, it's the council to adopt. We do have um, a very well-rated uh, company that, that come in, and I work with the chap that owns the company. And we've just crunch numbers for a day to align the financial statement to our um, SAGE accounts that I run. Okay. So um, they again have been into this again has been internally audited and I've checked it as well so I can assure you it's correct. Okay. It's a vote. Yeah. 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 Anyone yeah. second? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, both, yeah. And I've got a question, actually, if I may, Chairman. Yeah. Um, on what I think would be page 27, if it were numbered, but it isn't, 
Yeah, two pages after 25. Okay. On the end. Yes. Um, on the financial statement, yes. We've got a figure here on office description. The figure has gone down. Sorry, um, Sorry. Yes. Office you... section 137 expenditure, L larger funding ex gratius, has gone down from 5,500 to 5,000. And in the day when virtually everything is going up, I wondered how we managed to achieve that. Because they, um, it's the Four Towns Play Scheme, and we um, agreed to reduce the amount of money that we pay them, but they get free use of uh, a room at Bailey's Court Activity Centre for the four week duration of so, the course. So of it's the a quick growth yes. Okay, thank so you. So it's not that we're giving them less money, actually. Okay, yeah. right now it's a thank you. Uh, I think uh, right now we have a, a proposal and second term. Vote on the financial statement. On favor. That's unanimous. Thank you. Number 10. To have accept and sign the following audit reports 10.1 2018 2019. Then the conciliation. Rachel, again. So it's just a standard, the bank reconciliation report, which is this one, which has to be in this format or something similar. Again, this has been internally audited and um, reflects the statement of the accounts and our safety accounts. Yeah, yes. Just notice the loads of urgency accounts are 11 pounds. That's not what the problem any emergency is, is it? No. Oh. Do you remember what the emergency account was for? No. No. It, it's it's a separate what? account. What is it? Is it it's a separate account that we transfer. So if, if something happens to Barclays, right. we've we've got a, uh, we've got an account. We can oh, so quickly just, the, switch the money overnight. And you have to keep a certain amount in there. To I, keep have it to, open. I have to. I have to keep paying. It was <laughs> ten. I think you have to put an extra pound in. Nine. In it. No, yeah. we're we're up to twenty now. We're going major investments. <laughs> oh, so every three years they say put some money in otherwise we're going to close yeah, you down. In case they run out of tea bags. Yeah. It, it's just following the crush that happened sort of previous. It, it's part of our risk management. And we don't pay any bank charges. <coughs> okay. I'll propose that. Okay, I'll vote on. John Secretary. Water on please. All in favour. There is no opposition. Let's try it right now. Going for the next one. 10.2. 2018-2019 reconciliation between boxes 7 and 8 of the annual return. I mean, basically, this is um, a, a balance sheet mm -hmm. format in, yes. the, what the, in the format that the um, auditors require. Um, the town and parish councils of our level. And mm -hmm. um, this again relates back to the annual return figures. Again, I can guarantee it's correct and it has been internally audited. Okay. Anybody want to propose it? Mm -hmm. um, that's, uh, Keith Cranley, second by Franklin. All in favour? Ten point three, two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen. Explanation of variance between figures in annual report for the current and previous year. So this is the final part of the um, audit consideration. So it's looking at the figures shown in the annual return and comparing that uh, to the prior audited years to the current one, um, and there are thresholds. Um, above which you have to give a de detailed explanation. Um, normally we have got those in here, especially after the skate park was built a few years ago. We suddenly had a, a huge increase of um, 250,000. So, you know, we had to give a clear explanation. Yeah. The only one that we've got this time is linked to the Public Works loan um, for the office build and um, that is, um, it is uh, fully paid off in November 2021 and it, that's again just a formality so I've just attached 
uh, the uh, loan calculator, um, a year-end statement from the public works loan, um, and our, the external auditors, this was their format that um, they produced. Funnily enough, that came a year after I put mine in. <laughs> In that one, so it, it, it's just an interesting thing that so, um, you know that highlights any major shifts in expenditure. What, what was the increase in fixed assets and long term assets? 70,000 between last year. And Part of that is going to be the CCLA that we invested in because that goes in as an asset oh, yeah. in audit because it's invested in property. Right. Um, we bought the van. I mean, off the top of my head, I'd, I'd have to go yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, just give us so, a little brush. Sure. Well, you know, CCLA, uh, what was that, 20,000 van, uh, 13,000 play area at Be in okay. the Beacon, right. you know, ju just a few of those. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Financial matters. Approved bill of direct debit for payment. That will be around the sheets. That was tabled. Any questions? Mind, I do, yeah, do recycle. Um, I'd also like to say that previously we've had plastic covers. We've got rid of those this year. So I keep reusing them. Well, I like keep reusing them. So, so are there any queries on the bills and direct debits for payment?
can stop is to unlock the chat. So nobody could say anything before the election of the Congratulations, that's right. That's actually not the meeting, is it? Yeah. The back is hot for me. Just before the gathering, what? I said you were young. You can take the phone. Yeah. 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 Uh, I've got quite a few. Uh, oh, that's uh, fine. The public copy ones. That's fine. Just uh, uh, to recycle. Put it this way. It's choice where it's where. I did read through it. Did you? I did. Smart guy did. Because you did it. You lived it. Yeah. How fast did I get to use cover in that bag? Oh, 
So anybody I'm pulling up? My last day tomorrow. I'm off on holiday. I'm bringing some in tomorrow. Not even those Grenadians. Well, I'm going to get a break Oh, I'll force down the cost. I'm not into the other. That's fine. I'll make it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Is that the 24 hour Wi Fi, or is the Wi Fi only on when the office is open? No, that's continuous, yeah, 24 hour. 24 hour. Because it also links with the Pay Circuit cameras as well. Okay, so somebody could park a car nearby and just, just Wi Fi connect and be happy. Yeah. Assuming they knew the Wi Fi code, yeah. So well, they would have to have been in to, to be alive to ask, yeah. 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 So, okay, so, yeah. One, one change. Frequently. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yes, because sometimes I want to. Really, you should have a guest network set up on those Wi-Fi systems, because otherwise you're just giving the black access to everything. Yeah. Well, if you've got computer staff in the office and no, they're all on the same network. No, 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 that's two different things. This is a Jubilee Center. That's the office. You've got a different office network. Yeah. Yes, exactly. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's true. This is only for the Jubilee Center. Mm. It will show DSC, yeah, lots of things. Yes. Yeah, it's not really part of that, but I will ask yeah. the guest. So as, as far as I know, it's not that. Because we have another one over there. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. You work as well, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So we just have to speed yeah. up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. You'll, you'll go through the one application. Oh, that's just on 7.30, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Change the yeah. rhymes and chat. Yeah, because we're getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's really... Yeah. I don't think that makes sense. that long, but it was a clock, wasn't it, the latest? And I think 20 to 1 was the latest. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? I've got through a meeting on one of the counties in Birmingham. Where is this house? Right, there with me on second. Right, okay. Snowberry Close. 15 Snowberry Close. By Stephen's house. Stephen Hawke, yeah, he lives in Snowbridge. It's off Hawke's Crescent. Yeah. 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 Have you changed anything that would affect this? No, well. <laughs> it's loaded. How I know that is because you have explicit instructions that we went and usually not to put one in the Well, I do. It's this house here. Have you got virus protection on it? We've been lent to some, haven't we? It doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't connect to anything. But they might have connected it. It's on our Wi-Fi now. <coughs> you never know what they connected it to or what they put... I wonder whether that's what's slowing it down, because normally it? I don't it's have close. Wi-Fi connection. It's it's quite quite yeah, that's what it's doing, isn't it? Close. That's why it's downloaded some updates. Like it's oh, yeah, there's a flat set. That's Tesco's. I thought it was yes. up north. Mm -hmm. This is Meadow Yeah. You're used to the dot that says you are here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so it, it was that, okay. it was a test What is the man the shoe This house here. What, what is the issue with the property? Yeah. One on the end. Okay. What is the issue? Um, one second. Simple story here. So. There is an objection from yeah. the neighbour. Is it? Uh, actually, I'm not sure that their, their comments are actually necessarily planning. Mm. It's a single story, it's not as if it's going to affect the neighbours really. Is it right on the boundary? I think yeah. what they're trying to say is that it affects their visual amenity. Which is great. That is, is yeah, but the right to light. No, there's no right to light. No right to light, which light. is one of the Not unless yeah. it's secondary, and then you've got a hard job to prove it. Not right. ancient lights, I know it's not in this case, but... And actually... I actually want a case. Can we have to look that? Okay, after reading this, we want to... No, from the one I took, there's no... This building... It looks as though it is on the boundary, yeah. the bit that's just come off the top of the page. Mm. All things will be affected, which is not so we have
side it gets goes in further on that side. Some drawings they provided are not particularly helpful. No, they're they're not 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 normally, we will look at the application, what they are actually want to do with the It's a very really tight one when you look into yeah. it. Well, I think the it's photograph covered. doesn't help because it's at the wrong angle. Yeah. What we should have had was a drone <laughs> photograph. Well, they, they don't supply these uh, photographs. I, I, I do them off of oh, Google Earth. Yeah. yeah, but Google Earth hasn't done, done the 90 degree down, mm -hmm. which would have been... I'm quite, I'm quite agree with that because, like you said, you can actually see yeah, exactly, the, exactly the, where it you, is. You want the ground on yeah. that of what it is, so if Sorry? you could draw a dotted line on how it comes out, it's a better picture than that. Yeah, exactly. That the application. Well, the block plan shows that, doesn't it? So you're actually yeah, a single story room extension. Yeah. 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 You just went to the left, but now it's really defied everything. Carl was rang the other day, actually. Did you see it? Oh, 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 saying. Saying. <laughs> I didn't mean to just throw a random word in there. The house they they did the 3D thing on the roof, wasn't it? So they've slowly gone round the town. That's why I thought the rendering of the buildings was taking all that out and just built 3D render. So there, this end, you've got one. That's above the, the, the carriage. That's why it's not that work. Third side that you want. Right. Okay. Who is actually doing it? Is it the builder or actually the homeowner? Who is actually giving the application? Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe the work. Maybe it's applications, no. Mine's like that. No, it's the, the applicant. They've the, actually the, Yeah, they've, admit, they've done it themselves. The resident. Ah. Uh. This comes out of order, but uh, I'll take your advice. What do you think of this property? Because it's going behind, it's actually com completely covering the whole area. Mm. I'm looking at this picture here. Is this one on the end? Yeah. Okay. That one. This part, they're actually coming out straight away. As long as it's within their boundary, you can't. And it's only a single story. But we need to explain. Do you think that, like, the plot? of land around there, very small. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So putting a size and extension of any here. type is a bit... Quite yeah. a long garden. Yeah. There. Very narrow garden. I'm yeah. sure yeah. 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 recommend to the South Gloss that we turn it down on the grounds of overdevelopment of the site. That's what I would go for, personally. Yeah. Mm. I'm yeah. surprised yeah. it's have a PDR on the end of it. Because they could... I'm sorry. Oh, well. ...of development, because it's not that huge. Yeah. Yes. Well, that is what it gets fall under. Yeah, it's taking up yeah. forty percent of the it. garden. Yeah. There's no different than no. extension. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. I just got a question now. Uh, to be clear, I disagree it because of what we're seeing at the moment. That doesn't stop them from reapplying, though, does it? No. Well, well, we're just a consul team, as yeah, it is one of the well consul well, teams. Well, so they will take our view into account and they will take the yeah. objection from the adjoining neighbour into account, they then put together a report and they then sort of address all the things that have been raised by no. people. Okay, so that's great, but I would, like, I would like to add to that, to make the suggestion that we have a 90 degree down. <laughs> no, we get off the no, 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 no. no. so they, they, they submit to South Gloss the relevant yeah. planning application documents yeah. that they have to, which yeah. is legally what they have to supply. So. Right. And then we have to make our comments within a certain time scale as well. Yeah. Okay. And also on the documents which they produce, which are what they have to produce. So. Okay. Thank you. I feel, well, looking at it, it's exactly like as it's eating up, as a narrow garden, they're taking up the whole, it's certainly home development in a sense. If everyone is doing that, gardens, all that area is gone. It's over development. What do you think, Ben? Over development. Well, we're supposed to have a certain amount of greenery, isn't there? A big plan by South Gloss to show them that it could take as much. So that's 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 your garden is yours. Garden. Your garden is yours, yes. It doesn't even swing into it. Yeah. Fabrizio. Yeah.
just to actually start the mentoring, okay, you can you do this part, okay? I have no idea. Uh, yes, I, I agree that it's not uh, really the, uh, how it is going to affect the neighbor. Okay. It affects because when a proper development is coming, his area will look claustrophobic. That's what he wants to say. I mean, maybe he will, may not be very really good terms with that person. That's the personality that we do. I think one of the things as well, actually, which I mean is, is always recommended to anybody putting in a planning application, is that they speak to the neighbours before yeah. they submit the application, yeah. just yeah. to let people know this is what we're thinking of doing, so it doesn't come as a complete surprise. When good to see. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, otherwise, even the, they are getting it. They will get that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like a planning application. It's you want to say it. At this point, is, is it possible that it doesn't fall under actually it does fall under permitted development? They don't have permitted development in rallies too. Permitted development rights have been removed from the majority of the properties in the rally scope. I think because when they were building the town, because they were building sections at the time, the developers didn't want something ugly. Do you know what I mean? A planning act that someone putting in Different. some huge castle. side something, yeah, which would I'm then the mean that they couldn't sell those houses. Okay. So, the whole of the town has to be able to We, we kind of take you for guidance, yeah. don't we? Because yeah. if the law was different and it hadn't been removed, yeah. then there are certain ones yeah. that would fall within the development yeah. development. Generally, they're noted by the PDR on the application, yeah. so you can use that as a yeah. form of guidance. Yeah. And it kind of gives you an idea as to whether or not the South Gloss will listen to us, because more often than not, if it's a PDR, then they're going to let it go through anyway. But you know, in Rally's room, it's not there. So that is been the case for a long time. But some people, some builders will advise, I have heard, advice, oh, it does it just be a promise for development. Even somebody told me, yeah, we can actually do it. But there is no promise for development rights in that. I was asking if there's been any, we had our extension. Uh, it's, a, it's a conservatory. So we, it's we applied to South Gloss yes. and then uh, they got back to us saying uh, you don't need the uh, planning permission to go ahead. Yeah. Right. Okay, when was that? How many years ago? Uh, four, four years, years ago. So we passed it. The same thing came mm -hmm. here okay. <laughs> and gone. Okay, yeah. so you see? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's been done, completed. Yeah. If you are actually yeah, concerned yeah. doing it <laughs> twice, <laughs> not once, yeah. you need twice write that to review on it. Okay, so that's how it is. Okay, so anybody so want to this? proposed objection on overdevelopment of site, mm. and I think the Ben did you second it or not? Uh, yes, I did second it. Yeah. Okay, objection. Okay, all in favour of the proposal of protection? So we're objecting, objecting to the proposal. Yeah, all yeah, yeah. in favour of objecting. One, two, objecting. three, four, five. Against? Abstentions? Okay, so yeah, it's been sure No, but we have to make a decision on the evidence presented to us, don't we? Unfortunately, if they don't do their merits, we're. Yeah, no, I'm just. I'm waiting for you to abstain because you're not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so that's all right. Okay, so we have to make a decision on the evidence presented to us, don't we? Unfortunately, if they don't do their merits, we're. Yeah, no, I'm just. I'm waiting for you to abstain because you're not sure. Number nine, to deal with matters referring to the scope within the scope of the planning and involvement committee not covered elsewhere. Sorry, 9.1, South Coast Council, Trips Patch Lane, Metro Bus Extension. Oh, Gypsy Patch Lane, take a stakeholder line to update. Yeah, you have that. Okay. Just for your information, so you can see what my, is currently happening. I don't know with my eyesight, but I can't tell the difference between the existing counters and the temporary counters on the little map they've given us. Oh, the little finger and run. Oh, what you mean the difference between the orangey colour and the pinky colour? Oh, I've got them both as reggie colours. Ah, uh, yeah. Have you seen the latest? Yeah. On this? ET are probably going to go over on the closure. Ah, oh, even though they agreed that they yeah. would definitely be finished by the 1st of July. Looking at it today, there's no way that's going to be finished, according to Brian Aronson. And as we said at the meeting, all the businesses, although they said that they contacted all the businesses, there are most businesses now, the calls are losing £500 a day. The post office is facing possible ruin. 
Um, McCall say they have not had any contact from any South Cross officer at all. So everything those officers assured us, Sharon, we were there, they have not done. I guess and, that will come up at next week's meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and as you know, there were lots of um, protests from some of those traders about having signage put up to say that they're open for business. The best they can do is put that sign up at the bottom of uh, Hatchet Road, mm -hmm. saying that the road is closed ahead and business is no, down. Down, yeah. no. So I've put <coughs> lots of stuff up on social media to try and let the businesses be seen to be getting some advertising. But the officers just aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. And those businesses are genuinely going to lose money and jobs will be lost. I'm guessing that they are complaining vociferously to yeah. South Wales County. And all they're being told is, is that there is a process mm. of mm. business relief on the rates, oh, right. which they will not get half of those. They've already looked into it and they will not qualify. Mm. Okay, why, as your ex South Wales councillor, how much lobbying or pressure you can actually put on these officers? Well, us, we, we are already putting loads of pressure on the parish. We've got the meeting tomorrow, haven't we? The parish and town council forum. Yeah. forum. Um, I think the, the, um, the officers at the stakeholders meeting did take a lot of grief from a lot yeah. of people, didn't they? It wasn't that nobody's doing anything, that was businesses and, they're and not residents. Really, and they're not very reassuring, are they? Well, they sound reassuring, but obviously they don't carry out their reassurances. We've met lots of people like that. Alex, very absolutely. reassuring about uh, talking the talk, uh, not walking the walk. Yeah. Um, I went to, because Baines is open now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I went the other way, I went the back end. So I can't see, you know, like Little Stoke. Glowford. And then down, and Glowford. then through, go past Stoke, Gifford, um, Leisure Centre, whatever you want to call it. I went that way, so I can't yeah. see why they say this because I know that road is open up up to a certain point to yeah. have residents in, mm. so they would still be able to get to the shops anyway. Yeah. But it's all the businesses up on Station Road, like the builders are. They're losing loads of work. Well, why aren't people going back? Hang on, you can actually go up and, uh, to the bridge and turn right up Station Road because I do that to go to the dump. Here's the issue. The issue is it's not clearly signposted that no, there is that no. access. Um, I get the bus pass there every day and there's a big fat sign that says road closed ahead. Yeah, yeah but a bit further up though, it does say. Um, there are signs which say, yeah, yes, there's but also the signs which say. It's not at the point where no, you, know, you come into the roundabout to look at it, so you think the road's narrow. Yeah. The stack of road is here closed. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they need to have the sign that accurately mm. says road closed that bridge. Road closed at bridge, yeah. then people mm. will go down. But because they're on the roundabout, they're so looking at that, go closed in here, mm. and then zip off the other way. Yeah, because I think there might be a sign a bit further down or round there which says business is open as usual. Yeah, yeah but you've got yeah. to. You've got that needs to be by the it's, roundabout. It's hard. Yeah, they need to know where they need to put the it. The other. Okay. Sorry, when you come up on, on the roundabout, mm. If you move off the main roundabout to the small one that you would come up to go to Tesco's, there should be a sign there that says you can get the background access here because you just turn to the end of the road, turn right, go up to, turn left, and drive in that way. So why isn't there a, a, a signage that says detour that allows you to get to the shop? Yeah, that's what needs to be there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, South so Cross have actually said that they cannot advertise for individual businesses. Which is a joke, but it's a detour yeah. of the right. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm just well, saying that they, in yeah. respect of the businesses being yeah. open. But that's a joke, Sharon. Like I said at the meeting, every one of these South Cross roundabouts, all bar one in Bradley Stoke, is sponsored by companies. There and was they a, paid. yeah. They get paid. Yeah. And they've got the adverts of the company that's sponsoring that roundabout. Yeah. Because so they got planning permission for that. They got they? planning permission, thing, yeah. yeah. Sure. But, you, you know, I mean, all right, we can't tell these traders to just go ahead and put signage up. That is what they've already done. I wasn't going to tell them that, but, you know, let's be honest. We know what will happen. Planning enforcement will come along probably in six weeks' time after the road is reopened. Too late anyway. 
But I can't tell them to break the law, can but, I? You know, yeah, but, but, is that but a if you're way? facing ruin, that's what you do, isn't yeah. it? No, it's okay. Do you want to actually feed them back? As because Sharon will be attending the next slice. Well, Keith, Keith goes to the meeting. Yeah, we'll there. So. Believe yeah. me, there will be a lot of people oh, feeding that back. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. I mean, the other thing, Sharon, as you know, I brought it up about the, the bridge, Braden Avenue. It's an 18 ton mandatory weight restriction on that bridge. And we are getting all the big artics coming up off of Brookway. I did that, notice there was a, a big vehicle, was it vehicle excise person was there the yep. other day? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> thank yeah, you for right. keeping it. But you say it happens during the middle of the night. It's happening in yeah. the middle of the night. There's been Royal Mail, there's been all of them. They've all been coming up there in the Isn't hours of darkness. Okay. You know, and it's going on in the day. Now, you, you know, the bridge will collapse. This road is subsiding as well, further down by Silver Birch Close. Is it? Okay. That road crumbles, then you've got one massive problem. And that's problem down there anyway, because there all the cars that are down there, it makes it worse. Mm -hmm. And that's say that has been meant to raise. Yeah, well, Brayden has already started to crumble. It is, yeah. yeah. Well, there's there's an update. King. So Mark King's been up himself. He's looked yeah. at it. He uh, said, yes, yeah, so there's something. It's an update on the extension of this group. Which is we got. Uh, we accept that. But if there are any feedbacks to the next meeting, we can actually see one by one. You want to see? One? People who have handy, you want to say anything? Fabrizio? Yeah, no, just move, just move the uh, appropriate signage to the appropriate places. Uh, yeah, no, please. No, do you want to say anything? No. Michael, you want to say anything? Because this is an update, and if you want to feed back anything to the group. No, I don't like what I'm trying to As I say, I think everything is, the, the yeah. councillors has, raised, has already been raised, and will be raised again at yeah, next yeah, week's I meeting, want to, definitely. I, that, that, I yeah. want to actually feed back. I've got something to add. Why don't the officers listen to the local members? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, no, they, 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 they didn't hear them. No. That's right. Okay. That's, uh, okay. But before moving, as I forget to actually say something which I should have said to you, yes. One of the problems right now, have you seen Lake yesterday? Sorry? Have you seen the Lake? Oh, Ford. Black Ford. Lake. Uh, lake. So, it was actually flooded. The, even the water came to uh, the benches, you know? The, really? Over the, yeah. It was, uh, you could see that in the three books, which was a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Well, water came up. So, because in the water, yesterday it was raining. Oh. Uh, I think we need to actually um, put a signature cabin or actually do something to deslit that lake because it's muddy already so it's actually coming up that's the reason why water was, was even under the bridge oh. okay. so that's a special ruling or something isn't it South Gloss Council are in the process aren't they the actually I met I um, met John Morris yeah uh, but a business it, case to but to I said to. I told him rather than a business case I said, instead of you using all money, public money to drain it, give that money a fertilizer company to actually dug it and they get some money out of it. So it's a business rather than an expenditure. You will get some income, right? Mm. So that is a claim. So, which I, that's what I told him, John Morris. What did he say? Yeah, we will look into it. Yeah. Please tell Toby as well. <laughs> But and I in think actual fact, it's doing its job because good. it is an attenuation it's flood pond, yeah. it's yeah. not a lake, isn't it? Yeah. So that it's actually yeah. doing what it's supposed the, to do. The, the water levels down there, although they were high, I mean, they were contained. I've been lifting these away for 20 odd years. I've seen them higher. I have seen them higher to the point that where the picnic benches are, they've, got um, they've been underwater. Yeah. But that's, that what it, that's what it's designed for, yeah. it is an attenuation flood pond. This mm -hmm. one is part of the insurance one, okay? Just point out, because please, if you can. Because one thing which I, wildlife is an issue. Right now, as the water is coming down level, many of these things creating. I think we should do something, as this is actually in our own areas. The immediate people are actually. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, what were you saying? said there was the um, South Glass Council had a cutback on the. Wildlife enforcement, I forget what it's actually called. Mm. But with the increase of water, you get an increase of rats. Cold, you know? 
And so it was, I think you've got a picture here somewhere oh, of, 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 of massive of brass. brass. So, um, obviously, that is that, yeah. I, I think the only thing that we could say is is that to somehow monitor that and make sure that there, there isn't an increase of rats about because that leads to other problems. Anybody wants to say anything on that? Okay, then otherwise we'll move on. That's the reason why I actually put that on the Because as it was happened yesterday, and I saw. Okay. We did actually write to South Gloss to John B. Morris to say formally say that we completely supported their business case to desilt pond. So we have we have put our input into it. So and I know they were definitely looking into it. I think it's just because the cost of the work is so phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, but nine point two. So post amendment to community infrastructure levy regulations one point. So, 153 list consultation. Yes, she already. Uh, you've got the report there, so um, they would like us to um, support their suggestion that following appropriate consultation, highways maintenance is added to the SIL regulation 123 list, thereby allowing the council to use SIL receipts on this function. I would have thought that was the perfect. I don't understand why I haven't got that already. So, it's a consultation, isn't it? Yeah. So we need to hear a fine bar? Yes, we just, they just want to know if, we're in, if we would support. Agree the proposal. Anyone to second that? <laughs> and you? All in favour? Gosland Way proposed speed cable and zebra crossing consultation. So we are back. This one? Yeah, great. Chair, can we uh, yeah, 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 you can say. Okay. Chair, can we be sure on that one that they have looked at the accident levels? For, you know, for putting in the crossing. A crossing nowadays is somewhere in the region of seventy thousand pounds. They've already got the crossing in there. Yeah. So it's just to make it into a speed table because right. people aren't stopping. But any of these conversions or anything to do with it, they'll start saying, "Oh, we need anti-skid surface put down, additional markings, additional signage." If you start this. building out, then you've got to redo all the gutters, the drainage. You know, before you know where you are, you remember Andy, mm. Mark King at the area forum mm. when we but, um, wanted to put the Kate, crossing on the first. Okay, the thing is, this one, the purpose of the scheme is to reduce the traffic speed mm. approaching the zebra crossing near the Bosland Green Primary School which will improve road safety for vulnerable road users as well as making, making walking. Oh, sorry, walking. So there is actually a duplication. They asked them to actually take that. That's a bad English. Uh, uh, walking and cycling to school more attractive. And to make, maybe. To make, I think. Yes, Fabrizio. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to say, this is my backup account. And I feel strongly about this. I didn't propose it, of course. No. But the, so basically, through uh, Oastland Way, there are two types of traffic. There are local people, uh, and I've got my son attending Oastland, uh, Oastland Green Primary. Right. And then there are people just cutting through to get to Trench Lane and mm -hmm. somewhere else. And you can see the, immediately the car, if the car in front of you is which type they belong. Because the speed limit at that point drops from 30 to 20. Mm. And you can see responsible drivers slowing down near the zebra crossing. Mm. Mm. And you can see cars just speeding yeah. past, mm. taking the roundabout and disappearing on the horizon. Mm. Mm. So this is why 
uh, I think it's a good thing, but uh, also sometimes I get one of these cars behind me, and when I decrease the speed from 30 to 20, I get someone tailgating me, which is mm -hmm. but possibly with a table. Yeah, speed table. Speed table would be better. This is at least yeah, it's table. a uh, speed table issue. Is it's not been an income sometimes and kind of advice with I don't know how many people stop it and do it. At least the car behind you would expect you to slow down. Sometimes I see cars behind me. They do not even expect me to abide by the twenty on the road. Okay. Yeah, I've been up there quite a few times, and I've when we're obviously doing lucrative income as well, and I have actually seen cars speeding up there as well. And there was one little girl with her mum waiting to cross the road on the zebra, and the car did not stop. Mm. Mm. And that is not good because if that child had actually put her foot on, she would have got hit. Yeah. So anything that will improve the entrances by the schools, the crossings near the schools, is a good thing. There is one on Paratry, which is exactly the same as they're proposing here, and that does work. If, if there's fact that you're driving down there, people do actually slow down for that uh, speed table, so I, I agree, it's a good thing. Okay. Yes. Is a zebra crossing the right thing, or should it be a toucan crossing, considering the type of road it's on? Mm. Toucan. Toucan cross, mm. pedestrian, cyclist crossing. Traffic light. Yeah, traffic light. I still light. think yeah. the visual sign, the speed sign, yeah. is better. Well, the more you have there, where the schools are, mm. the better. And, and it's like with the one that's up here that um, one of the residents is fighting for. This one. So, yeah. 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 I think we should put this one in our website because the children who are affected, you know, the, or the parents, they can actually also see to that there's actually a consultation going on. I'm guessing that do you have notification through yes, it for the school? I can, no, not from the school. Oh, right. no. yeah. Yeah. So that's so just you know for the yeah. link or something so that yeah. no website. So that's my, my suggestion. After that I propose accepting it. Yeah. We were in favour of putting it. Do you propose Tom? Yeah, you can uh, revise somebody else. Yeah. Can I say yeah. Yeah. before you go so that it would not be wide worth widening out to what Ben said to, to investigate viability of possibly putting a traffic light control yeah. one in there instead. No, it's, quite quite sensible. Cool. it's quite a major road. Yeah, so so yeah. Considering how other roads in the, the town are have crossings to put across them, I think a two can crossing would be perfectly acceptable and a better solution. Very but then how much would the expenditure I'm guessing right? that from a cost point of view, yeah, two can crossing would be more, be more much expensive. More expensive. expensive. But people would stop though, wouldn't they? They would stop. They'd have to stop. stop. They, they can't go stop. through red light, can they? Yeah. If you so, look, the, the questionnaire that you have to fill in is on, it's quite small writing because that's as good as I could get it. <laughs> um, so that's what you need to, the responses you need to give. Yeah, do you support the scheme as a goal? Yes. Do you agree with the location proposed? Yes. Do you agree with the scheme anyway? Please Space below to give us an explanation of your answer. So for me, that would be our disagree because I think you should go to the crossing, not a separate crossing. So is that that you're so you're going to object to the scheme then, are you? Because I think this should be a pass, yeah, it's quite. Or you just put it out anyway. It's one of these how you stop reading your wife get questions, isn't it? Yes, which is really. Yeah. <laughs> Why's the other one? But I, I think um, with that proposal, I just want to really add to our website so that people, other people can also add to that link and do it. Okay, so no, all in the website. We haven't made yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, can, we can put the link because it's a public consultation so we can put the link through yeah. to the South West website. So you can ask people from... So, so you're there, in favour of the proposal and yeah. I've seconded it. Yeah. All in favour of the proposal. I could put in... Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I can put in comments. I'll keep it upstanding. Yeah. In the um. Yeah. Yeah, in there. You I can do it, but rather than necessarily within the consultation, but on I separate. can reply to the email that came in. Yeah. Okay. 
Hey, but I don't, I don't want to vote in favour of supporting the scheme. Yeah. I think that the, the but right something scheme. is better than nothing, you know, do it yeah. just as a strong. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't want to settle, I don't want to settle, but I want to express the point of view that I think there should be something else. There should be a better solution. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But I thought we were putting that in. That's why I voted yes. No, that, that, no. because no, no, there isn't no. actually in necessarily the a capacity within the consultation to put that. Consultation doesn't actually say whether you agree with that or not. That's it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to know any other things. I'll go with what Ben Ben's going to go with because I think a, a proper the other the other option, option is that you respond. <laughs> yeah. The, hang on a minute. The other option is that you respond don't know to a whole questionnaire, and then at the end perhaps you could put in you think it should be. Two. The two can instead. If we say no, are we running the risk of getting nothing at all? Yeah. Well, possibly, yeah. potentially, yes. And equally, it looks as if the town council aren't supporting it. It does, yes. And that will, yeah, that will definitely. Be, so yeah. I, to, in my head, as a, you have to take a point of view and aside. My point of view is, is that I think there should be some a better solution than what they're proposing. We, there are zebra crossings. There's a, there's zebra crossings all over the place where people don't treat Stop. them properly and, and treat yeah. them what they should be. I think for a place with schools where they are, it's perfectly justified to have a two-can crossing, and that insists that people have to stop. They sure. can't go through a red line. Well, we respond to the email instead, then. My, my suggestion to councillors as individuals, because you're, you can, you can all respond to the consultation, is that perhaps if councillors feel strongly that, that you're not happy with this, can we write one letter and put the names of the councillors that yeah. support that one letter? Well, no, I think they do better yeah, because it's actually, you have to, re they want you to respond online mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the, the questions that they ask you in this consultation are here. So I would suggest that councillors all go online and respond accordingly. Mm -hmm. We do that in our own time as well. Yeah. We still have to take an yes, you now need to decide, but it's yeah. cool as well. But the, the, the consultation here, yeah, it doesn't... Comments published feedback. But can we put that one as a cons on the comments here? Comments will be posted. Can we do that, mm. Sharon? Yeah. Well, you, they've took a Yes, you can put it in there. Yeah. But, but that says if you have indicated that you disagree with the scheme <coughs> in any way. But we could still you could still put that we put feel that, that, that you feel that that you're in agreement with the scheme because as Andy said otherwise it does look like the town council of the support of the scheme that you would suggest so we would prefer a crossing i would suggest that you put a comment However. in number 11 that you uh, agree with the scheme hmm. yeah but and perhaps you could put in here <coughs> that you agree my, my suggestion would be that you agree with the scheme in principle, yeah. however... Or we agree that a scheme is necessary, yeah, however we would prefer if it was considered to be... That the scheme is necessary. Uh, yeah, I have no problem in... Or a scheme is necessary to facilitate traffic safety. And is the there one of them already? The no, there's just, no, there isn't, it's just a crossing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're right. Okay. There are currently speed cushions. A sixteen meters on the side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay.
disapprove the scheme in any way, please use the space below to give us a brief explanation of your answer. We agree that, agree that scheme is necessary to faci facilitate pedestrian safety on use of the road, but would urge South Wales Council to consider a light controlled crossing instead, as the consultation is based on vehicles not stopping at several crossings. Yeah, that's great. I'd like to thank Sydney for washing out with that. Don't make it the same reason. I think it was, except uh, Keith, everybody already agreed to any of these guys. So Tom proposed that, and um, Bab seconded it. Are you happy with those? Yeah. Yeah. So Two hands up, is that urgent? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we move on to the next one. 9.4 parking issues in Wheatfield Drive, Dufour's Drive. Right, um, funnily enough, uh, yeah. I think Brian was approached oh by somebody who had a concerns. I also had an email from a resident who is concerned about the amount of cars that are parked at the bottom end of Wheatfield Drive and Dewfalls Drive all day during the week. It seems this has now become a car park for people catching the Metro Bus T1 into work. Yeah. Even someone who lives at the bottom of Dewfalls parks one minute to drive from their home to be further down. This is causing problems for residents who are able to park outside their home. Which is what we always worry about. We always said it was yeah. going to happen. Um, so, um, actually, I, I did reply to the, the resident who sent me the email inviting her to come tonight, but she hasn't, and she didn't even respond to say thank you for inviting me or anything, so... She actually think that she had done her duty, and she feel that, oh, I already said what I want to say. Yes, um, I would agree, it's absolutely horrendous. Down that, especially at um, taking dropping off kids in their school and picking them up as well. Um, obviously, because I've had to, when I picked my grandson up and granddaughter, I walked it because obviously it's only just a few bits up there. And the traffic down there is horrendous because mm -hmm. the roads aren't wide enough and they're parking here, there, and everywhere. And uh, there were occasions where you tried, there was trying to get through that way because of the traffic calming. And you've got cars trying to come out at the same time and you've got these signs, very rude signs at each other. So yeah, there is a problem down right there. And, and there's, there's a problem on all the schools, but I guess it's being exacerbated by people by, parking yeah. there parking, yes. and then catching the bus. But That's yeah, we, it was always said that. We had a speed of that LB, yes. Yeah, Tom, it's <coughs> an area-wide uh, problem. It's yeah. not just here, it's yeah. right across South Wales now. What, people parking for the Metro bus? Parking mm -hmm. because of the Metro bus. We've got it up at Parkway North. We've got it because of the bypass now. People are coming in, putting their cars up in the streets there, catching the Metro bus, or walking into the station from the rear. Not as we've had it for years, where everybody parked their cars in the village in the front, and then to avoid paying the car parking fees, they go in the station and without paying parking fees. Now it's all happening at the back plus the Metro bus parking as well. Mm. The whole area is becoming a car park. Yeah. So what we've got, we've got an officer called Kelly Huggins. Mm -hmm. She is undertaking an area-wide review of parking. Mm. She's doing Stoke Gifford, Parkway North, Cheswick, all those areas at the mm. moment. It's a massive piece of work. And whatever they do is thankless because all they're gonna do is tinker with the bits of parking on junctions, on bends, and all it'll do is force all the traffic somewhere else. Okay. But you decided that, or you've what got is to that, have Kelly? a, a is residence it, What's parking. the name of that officer, Kelly? Uh, Kelly Huggins. Kelly Huggins. Whether we have to call her attention to this issue? All I can suggest you do is you can email her, you can ask her to perhaps consider putting it on an area-wide review of Bradley Stoke. 
Okay. It will trigger an investigation. You it's can going to take a month 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 before month 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 Okay, but you know, renting out, renting yeah, out, renting out, out drive, drive, yeah. that went down a storm with people that live in Bush Avenue, rent out your drive, you know, have the four by fours and the vans and everything else parking in Bush Avenue to avoid going the other side. How much tax do you pay on that? Well, there you are. It you opens up a real like can of words. Well, there you are. I mean, lots of elderly people, they've got a garden, they've got a garage, they don't use it now, they've given up driving. This revenue, that pays their mortgage or what, what, what pays their holiday, doesn't it? Not that much, you know, it's a small But Can you send me her, have you got her email address? Kelly. Or is it just Kelly.Huggins? Kelly Kelly.Huggins. I-N-S, Huggins? Huggins or Huggins? Huggins. Can we stop and film up in Costume North? No, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah, that was yeah. the people that okay. used to do the um, beer kits. I mean, send them to Saudi Arabia. They will have got charge them. Because there's only a four and a half hour parking, isn't there? And then they yeah, but if they, get, if they if they will have brought charge them, say, like for the eight hours. No, they don't want uh, their businesses to be sabotaged. Huggins. H-U-G-I-N-S. H-U-G-I-N-S. Lovely, thank you. That's right. Yeah. So that is a proposal. Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y. K-E-L-L-Y, yeah. Anyone here? Kelly, Kelly. Yeah. 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 So did Keith propose that? Yeah, Keith. Yeah, Not heard of that song. She'll thank me for this. I'm trying to get some of that. You've got a second one? Yeah. Thank you. That's a keeper in the job. Paula. I yeah. won't, out of uh, respect of the actual officer, I won't put her name in the minutes. No. I've just no. got a South Cross Council officer. Yeah. Yeah. She, He's she carrying will, out. She will probably suggest that assess, and meetings anymore. assess and decide team. Uh, what is that? Assess and decide team will have to look at some fine. of the issues. Uh, so this Things will be like back that. to the highway investigation scheme for the Royal Group. It, it's yeah. better to yeah. get yeah. photographs. Yeah. So anybody that's got an issue, the take the photographs, submit them, and then they can see the extent of the problems. The police will always say no obstruction, because parking is decriminalised. Yeah. So you're up against it. And, and of course the other thing is nobody actually has a right to park outside their house, so it's quite no. difficult to, for that that's to true. be used as a valid... Excuse, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, not an excuse, but a reason. That's true. And also, the, like, I am seeing many times homeowners coming out and saying, why are you are parking on the, uh, on the pavement, you know? So that kind of issues. Because right now, that's not a crime. That's mm -hmm. London, it's actually in London, and you will be given the penalty notice, but in this area, it is not. And causing much fights and arguments. Okay, can we go to the next one? I'm finished. Yeah. Number 10, to deal with matters relating to health and safety, we have an updated report available. That's in your agenda pack. Yeah. And, uh, we'll be yeah. It's been completed also, health and safety policies and procedures has been completed. What training is that? Legionnaire. Legionnaire is training for all site staff were carried out by, okay, so that's so Legionella is a bug which is found, yeah. which can kill people actually, is found in yeah. water supplies yeah. that aren't yeah. in the yeah, all right. Yeah. Bradley Stroke Jubilee Centre, uh, I think already he mentioned regarding in Markey, mm -hmm. was vandalised with a crime number. So are we actually pursuing that case or, or that insurance company? No, that's through the uh, the owner of the um, 